What a legendary episode. So many epic scenes. You can make a lot of wallpapers from this episode. The panels are off the charts. Kanki and Johto are such legendary generals. The way the writer developed Kankin in this episode and concluded Johto's storyline is incredible. I'm really impressed. Because so many epic things that happen in this episode, it does not seem like it was just one episode, but several. This just shows how skilled the writer is. Kanki, after seeing the success the Allied Army is having and knowing that they have the numbers, did decide to risk it all in order to balance things. His nickname, Headhunter, took another meaning in this episode. So it doesn't go just after people's heads but also the army's head. What is fascinating to me about these epic scenes is that how realistic they are, even though Kingdom is a fictional story. The way the writer preserves the realism is so incredible. Here's the thing, he doesn't have to do that, the story would be fine, since it is fiction. But the way he intertwines both is amazing. A group of soldiers passing the enemy lines is very realistic, even without trying to mask who they are or using flags to appear as the allied force. Soldiers cannot act on their own, or units, since the formation would be destroyed. And also, what if the general gave an order to another unit to deal with that enemy force? Then those units would cause a problem for one another, and the enemy will take advantage of that. There were cases in our world where an army needed to protect itself from its own soldiers. Whether a section of the army did turn back and run away from the enemy, or the units are disorientated, or had bad orders. The formation is very important, and you protect it at all costs, even against your own troops. Otherwise, the general is pointless. Since the battlefield becomes chaos, strategy and tactics are useless. Among the things that the writer always impresses me is how he develops a story. It is so organic, and yet, epic. And that is achieved through consequences. Which is the most important thing. Otherwise, there is no story, just fillers. Every step in the story is based on the consequences, that it happened previously and that's why all fits into place and nothing is forced or pointless or makes no sense. And also that's how the tension is always high and every action matters because every action is affecting the story in one way or another. Too bad I cannot say the same for the one arc in One Piece. Anyway, I really appreciate the interaction between Kankin and Jota. They are so different from one another, which makes for an awesome and funny dialogue. But they have one thing in common, and that is winning. As I talked earlier about consequences, Kanki had to do something in order to counter their success at storming the wall. And since the enemy had their numbers, it was just a matter of time when they would defeat the defenders. And that's what raised the stakes even more, since they were already in a bad situation. They cannot afford even the smallest slip-up. I don't like when characters die, but if they do, it better be a legendary death. And that's what Johto got. It was so epic and meaningful and satisfying. The last scene where Jota is barely conscious and it seems that the opportunity to kill the enemy general was lost and all of a sudden he sees the flag and comes back from the dead for a last charge was so epic. The dialogue between them was epic too. When Jota said if you want to kill a general do it by the power of your own hands and don't play with poisons. And a general never runs away. And the visuals showing Jota towering over him was great. I like it when the visuals and the dialogue complement each other. It made me laugh when I saw that even Kanki's men were cheering Johto when he went for the kill. But what made me sad was when I saw Johto's men crying and smiling at the same time. That panel was epic. Overall, this is an incredible writing. The last conversation between Johto and Kanki was great, especially the ending where Johto said to Kanki to become the best general. Kanki. You can sleep talk when you are dead, old man. Johto, stubborn bastard. That's how legends talk to each other. One of the many things that were epic in this episode is the implication that Kanki can be on par with the six great generals. That did surprise me. Not because I did not think he was capable of, but considering who he is, I did not think he was interested in those kinds of things. Having a career as a general and dedicating his life to war. The impression that I got from him was that he's doing this just for fun. He was tired and bored being a bandit and did decide to change things a bit. But that flashback scene wasn't a coincidence, and Johto with his last breath asking him to become the best, but his answer was what I expected, based on his character. You sure did drive me up a wall, old man. Kanki didn't like the burden that Johto put on him. I guess Johto had the last laugh. 
Anyway, I cannot wait to watch more episodes of Kingdom. Such an epic story. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.